Hello, I'm glad to be on your screen today to discuss some very pressing issues with you, which relates to our culture. And today, I'll be talking about the bride price culture. The bride price culture. For culture, I will be looking at the exploitative arm of the bride price culture. The exploitative arm of the bride price culture. Take a look at this document. I'll be back shortly. I'm sure you saw the document that just flashed by your screen. And taking a look at that, you will be a little bit amazed. Culture. This exploitative part of the bride price culture. Where did it come from? I'll quickly take us back to the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter um, 29, looking from verse 14 to 16 downwards. You see a relationship between two people, named one named Jacob and the other named uh, Leban. Leban was actually the uncle of Jacob. And when Jacob had a reason to visit Leban, along the line he fell in love with one of Leban's daughter and desired her as a wife. He had a uh, discussion with Leban and they agreed. Jacob should pay seven years to pay seven years of service in order to get the hand of Rachel in marriage. Now I wouldn't know why one year wasn't enough, two years wasn't enough, but seven whole years. Now, I'm basically talking about, I wouldn't know why they would require seven whole years. And if we are to assume that Jacob was working for Levan, because if you look at the preceding verse in verse 14 and 15, Levan was basically asking Jacob what should be his wage. You know, because he was already working for Levan, helping to take care of his flocks, and Levan actually wanted to pay Jacob. But instead of a pay, Jacob desired, all right, you can give me your daughter. I don't know how both of them ended up at seven years. However, seven years was agreed. Seven years of his life was to be put into service to his father-in-law just to have his daughter. Well, they agreed, and that may not look too bad. After all, they both agreed, so nobody was under pressure, or nobody was under compulsion. However, this is where the fraud came from. This is, this is you know, as you proceed, you begin to see that right from the get, right from the very beginning, Laban had no intention of doing anything right to Jacob. Laban's intention from the very beginning, the moment Jacob mentioned he was in love with Rachel, was to exploit Jacob. This was Laban's very intention from day one. A desire to exploit Jacob, even though the Bible did not say, I'm very sure the suggestion of seven years was something brought in by Laban. Alright? Because if it wasn't, why, how come at the end of the seven year of service, Laban refused to hand over Rachel to Jacob? Instead, got him drunk and gave him something else. Gave him Leah instead. And then it was after seven years, you now suddenly remember that in your village, the elder daughter must marry first before the younger daughter. When Jacob asked for the hand of Rachel, who was the younger daughter, from the very beginning, you never told him the other daughter must marry first before the younger one. So after putting seven whole years of his life in service, at the end of the seven years, you suddenly remember that you have an older daughter that needs to get married first. And then you hand over that one to Jacob without informing him. That was not the agreement. So from the very beginning, the intention of Levan was to exploit Jacob because Jacob was in love with his children, with his daughter. That's the fact. And then, when Jacob insisted on Rachel, he said, okay, 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 okay. You're going to serve me another seven years. Making 14. This is extremely exploitative. Extremely exploitative. But let's bring it home a little. Let's assume Jacob was any minimum wage in Nigeria or in any country you live in. Minimum wage. Look at all your minimum wages in a week, in a month, multiply it and you will see that Jacob was seriously being exploited. You know what it means to, to take somebody's 14 years wage just to have your daughter? 14 years earnings. Because that's what it means. For that 14 years, you won't be paid. And it's written there. If you read those scriptures very well, you will find that exactly that's what happened. For that 14 years, he wasn't paid a dime. All he got was two wives. And then at the end of the 14 years, Jacob went to Lebanon and said, Lebanon, I'll serve you to you give me wives and by that time you already have children. And it's time to go. Just to come, just to marry your daughter. He spent 14 years serving you. And now it's time to go. Won't you give me something? And Lebanon started twisting, turning, twisting, twisting for another six years. At the end of the day, Jacob spent 20 whole years with Lebanon. Exploited by every standard. Eban was fraudulent, Jacob was fraudulent. They were both just doing all kinds of things. The question now is, as funny as this may sound, this is exactly what happens in some part of Africa, particularly Nigeria. Almost exactly. 
Let me go back to that minimum wage. Minimum wage in Nigeria as of today, you know, July 2023, is still 30,000. And 30,000 by 12 months will give you 360,000. All right? If you multiply that for seven years, which was the first year that Jacob put into service, that'll be 2.520. Okay? Let's just say 2.5 million. Then if you multiply that by another seven, by 14 years, you know, uh, 360 by 14 years, you'll get about 5 million. About 5 million. Because Jacob sat 14 years just to have Rachel. That was his intention from the one. So he sat 14 years. Our weddings today in Nigeria now go up in over 5 million. You go to the family of the bride, I want your daughter, and they give you a list. By the time you look at that list from A to Z, it all stink of exploitation. It all stinks of, you know, the one with this, the, what, what we popularly call the Nigerian factor. The Nigerian factor. It just using, taking every advantage to exploit the man. Oh, he's in love with my daughter, let's, let's grab what we can grab from him. That's basically what happens today. It has nothing to do with our culture. Culturally speaking, what used to happen in our culture is that on the wedding day, the, 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 the groom is asked to bring certain items and they are all basically food items. And the basic reason was, based on my investigation, I may be wrong, you can correct me, but based on my investigation of our culture, the reason why the groom was asked to bring those food items, right, price was basically a very minor thing. All right, it was just a little deposit, something minor. So I don't, I don't want to talk about the bright price, I'm talking about the exploitative part, which is that list. All right, the reason why you were given that list to bring those items was basically they were basically for item, and the reason was basically to share cost. Because as a guest, you're coming to the womb, to the to your in-laws' house to take a bride. Your in-laws were to it was their duty to prepare food and other form of entertainment for you people. And this was going to be expensive. It's it's cost. It's, it's, it cost a lot of money. And so there was a need to share bills. You know, you you bring this one, we'll take care of the rest, stuff like that. That was basically the culture from the beginning. So you were asked to bring some two bar of yam because basically in the African culture a lot of pounded yam, you know, and all that. You bring two bar of yam, bring some palm oil, bring some palm wine, bring um, some um, uh, cola nuts. These were basically things to be consumed at the wedding. The very day at the ceremony, you know, that's the things to be consumed. These were the original intentions. But gradually greed crept in and people suddenly saw their daughter as a ladder out of poverty. You know, they begin to see their daughters as a ladder to climb out of poverty. What government couldn't do for you, you expect one young man to do it for your entire village. You see some, some marriage list, you see uncles demand, aunties demand, friends demand, neighbors demand, all kind of things. I'll flash some by your screen so that you see some crazy things we're beginning to see. What's all this? And tomorrow, there are, your daughters are running from church to church, praying for every demon that doesn't want them to get married. Which demon? Your cultures are your problems. The number one demon is the very people who start to agree that that list should be what should be given to your in-laws when they come, I mean to your husband to be. Those are the number one demons you should be binding. I saw one that was even demanding for oil milling machine. You know this palm oil milling machine? As part of the list. We've seen lists that had the uh, demand for roofing sheets. We've seen lists that have demands for motorbikes. We've seen lists that all kind of crazy things. What's all this? Very soon they'll begin to ask for house, you know. You begin to ask for land and ask for houses because the greed will continue to grow and some of our daughters are busy you know crying looking for one demon that is responsible this this uh, so tall came ran away the other one came ran away there must be a spiritual husband pursuing them my friend in a lot of cases these things have nothing to do with your spiritual whatever it's just the greed from your village somebody followed you to the introduction the moment they hand him lift he's gone and you don't know why men are very very rational and when they come to your house and you give them a document, they go and calculate the cost. And when they, they discover it's not worth it, they'll take their leave. What do you want them to do? Somebody saying, but you can go and negotiate. What am I buying from you that I'm negotiating? Just tell me. What is the young man buying? What are you selling that he's negotiating? It's, it's when you are buying a house, you begin to negotiate price. You know, uh, you said it's 20 million. No, 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 I can only afford 15 million. When you are buying something, are you for sale? Please, young ladies. Ask your parents, let them define to you properly if you are for sale or not. Because at the end of the day, when you are married, you begin to demand equal rights. You, can, you can't have it. Let me give you a funny example. You go to rent a, a flat, all right? You have a friend who told you, let's rent this flat together. And the flat is under some amount of money. And you alone paid everything, bought all the properties in there, and your friend only came with his back to live with you in that flat. Will the two of you have equal rights in that house? Let's, let's 
let's just let's just think as humans. Will the two of you have this have equal rights in that house? You rented the house, you paid, you bought all the property, did all the paint, everything at your own expense. And somebody else just come with a bag of clothes to live with you. Will both of you have equal right in that house? The answer is no. So when you're getting married and you suck the man dry, made him go into debt, and you get into the home and you are demanding correct, I doubt if you can get it. I doubt. And somebody like me would, would find it a little bit difficult to talk to such a man. Because a lot of times these men are in pains. I want to give you a, 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 a funny example. Those of you who are already married who are watching this, try and check the first problem, the first quarrel, the first disagreement you have with your wife. A lot of them is connected to that list. I'm telling you the truth. A lot of you were, you, you were dating, everything was going fine. The moment you went to his village and come back, your eyes changed colors. <laughs> what, what happened? Did somebody be in the village? A lot of the challenges couples have in, you know, in their early stage of marriage or why they are trying to get married, that list has a big problem. So let's begin to work on this and stop looking for ways to exploit young people. Look at this list I'm showing you on your screen. Are these this things not funny? Let me ask you. Let's check other part of the world. Is this how they do their marriage? We are proud of the African culture, but when the culture becomes exploitative, we should also be proud enough to come out and disown it and tell ourselves the truth that no, 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 this is not part of us. Africans are not lazy. We are not opportunists. We are not part of those who go about looking for who to devour. We work very hard for every, every dime we earn. That is Africa. This, this culture of using, you know, the name of bride price or bride list or whatever you call it to exploit young families, you know, young couples is unbecoming. It, it, it is gradually entering a stage where a lot of young ladies will remain single for a very long time. And why I keep saying this is because our pastors are always praying, fasting and praying. A lot of time, the cause of the problem for that woman you are praying for is not spiritual. It is greed from her village. When you are busy binding every power from the village, every power from the, some of the powers, are her parents, her uncles, her aunties, her kindred, that are decided to make her to turn her into a business venture you know they decided to use her marriage to leapfrog out of poverty what the nigerian government could not do for them they want one young man who is just starting his life to do it for them what their state governors could not do for them for years what they couldn't even do for themselves they want one person to do it for their entire family and i think i'll begin to i'll begin to advise families of groom to also begin to prepare lists for doctors yeah it is high time we balance this equation because at the end of the way you get married you just just have equal right the equal right must follow let's do it properly your parent gives me a list my parent also gives you a list list for list let's see how sweet this game will be it is high time we give ourselves some brain you know give ourselves some senses talk, talk to your parents talk to your parents you see, the, the most expensive marriage, expensive, is it a guarantee that the marriage will last or to be peaceful or to be enjoyable? Is there, is there a relationship between peace, you know, marital bliss and the cost of your marriage or of your wedding? There's no relationship. In fact, those who just got pregnant enter their husband's houses without anything, without paying one naira, a lot of them are happier. It's the truth not here to judge anybody don't do that and some of these cultures are responsible for that because if the young lady loves this guy and her parents and her kindred would, won't allow it and the guy can't afford their exorbitant bill what do you want them to do they will love together and I'll let you have your you know get to hell with everybody so I will beg our religious leaders to begin to talk to our parents let's begin to uh, see the culture is not out out to suffocate the people the culture's design is to make life worth living. This one, now you are not allowing the poor to breathe. Hmm? Please, let young men breathe. And you, you young lady, let me even ask you. you a lot of you, you are more, you're more interested in what your friends will say, this one and that, you know. After getting married, instead of your husband burning 10, 10 million naira for your wedding, just think about it. 
after getting married and you know two weeks later your husband buys you a car worth 10 million naira which will you prefer or just a month two months or some few months after your marriage you buy your husband buys a house which will you prefer you must learn to to bring you know your your wedding eh, should be as mini, as minimal as possible in terms of cost the cost of your wedding should be brought to the barest minimum if the man has so much money, there are better things to do with it. Not to feed a crowd who doesn't even care about you. Many of those who attend the wedding, many of them even like you. How many of them even care about you? Those of you who are married, all the people invited to your wedding, two, three years later, in fact, two weeks later, how many of them calls to find out whether you're happy or you're your wedding? How many of them even really care? Let's, let's give ourselves a break and focus on important things, not all these trivial issues. Every, way, every intention of your parents or your kindred to exploit any young man in the guise of wedding should be resisted. We must call a spade a spade. These corrupt tendencies that we are beginning to bring into marriage, you know, it's just like every other thing in Nigeria. You want to do your driver's license today, there's somebody there who wants to exploit you. You want to do your international passport, there's somebody at the gate who wants to exploit you. You want to do virtually everything in the country, there are people standing somewhere to exploit you. The same thing we brought into our wedding culture. Even in part of Nigeria, you buy a plot of land today, there are people who come there and they tell you they are, they are moneyless, whatever they want to exploit you. This is basically what we're doing. Exploitation. Everywhere. You're not for sale. You have not suddenly become a business, a business venture, you know, buying and selling. If I would want us to let our parents understand this, that we are not for sale. Just the same way the man is coming to marry you, that is the same way you are going to marry him. It's a it's two-way thing. So this one that somebody will fold his hand and open hand for the for the man to bring all the largest. Is he is he working for the government? Did the government appoint him to come and give you poverty alleviation program? When did marriage become poverty alleviation program? That's more detail. Maybe I'm missing something up. When did the government approve that wedding is not their new poverty alleviation program? Is that what is going on? Let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. Please. Let's help ourselves. Because at the end of the day, when you are growing old, you begin to find that caste demon that don't exist. The demons are your greed. Your greed. You refuse to understand basic things. You want the best, but you, you, you are not offering anything. You value your cost, everything, my wedding must be this and that. How much are you providing? You want a wedding of 5 million, 10 million? And you can't even afford even 10%. You're not serious. You're not serious at all. So as a lady, whatever will be the expense of your wedding, if you yourself can't even afford 30%, you're not serious. You don't see us at all. You are basically there to exploit that man. I will say it. I will say it. If you want something, you should be ready to fund it. Why do you want to? You want a very great life and you want to put the bill on my table? No, now. Even if the man is the one insisting on such an expensive thing, you can't advise him. What, what's your job as a white friend? To help him lavish his money? Think about it. God bless you. I like dealing with topics like this that are a little bit controversial because not too many people want to talk about them. But they are, they are facts. They are real. And I want us to drop our comments. If you're not following me before now, try and follow me. If you like what I'm doing, support me with just a follow, a click and a comment. That's basically all I want from you. If you are led by, by God, support me whatever way I'm here for you. And let's work together to build a better society for everyone.